everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back, guys, to another episode here on the Hermitcraft server. Hopefully, you guys are having yourselves a wonderful day today. I'm doing pretty good myself, and uh, I've been doing that thing where I've been playing a lot more than I should be, and not recording quite as much as I should be, so I actually got a few projects to show you just to get us started today. We got a little secret tunnel down here in this room now, with some bubble streams to pull us down. We hit the pressure plate and it pushes us down and we fall down this tunnel into another tunnel. Oh my goodness. Tunnelception. That's right. <laughs> so I've never done anything with Dolphin's Grace before and I wanted to uh, just kind of goof around with it and see if I could make a, a quick tunnel to get to the end portal. So this will take us all the way from our base and it passes underneath Azuma's base. Um, He's okay with it as long as he doesn't find out about it. <laughs> as usual. Um, Azuma's okay with pretty much anything I do as long as he doesn't find out about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, this will actually let us travel at about 50 blocks per second. And I was just kind of in a grindy mood to uh, build a long tunnel. And then it gets us all the way to the portal. Just like that. So this is a quick way to get to the gaming district. Because that's where the, the portal is. But it's also a quick way for us to get to the shopping district from our base now. Oh, and uh, obviously we can get to the end, as you just saw as well. <laughs> so it's a pretty uh, handy little tunnel. So the gaming district is just over here, and we have a way of getting to end portal down here. Not super safe at the moment. But then our uh, water tunnel just connects right over there. So when we get to the end, if we keep going straight, we go to the end portal, but we can also go up this bubble column if we want to get to the gaming district. Uh-huh, yeah, so this was a cool little project for me to get more acquainted with Dolphin's Grace, because there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about it. Like, I didn't know you could do this. <laughs> it's kind of fun, kind of goofy. You might recall that for a while in the game, during the 1.16 snapshots, there was a way of combining the soul speed enchantment on your boots with the Dolphin's Grace effect, and they would exponentially let you get moving, like thousands of blocks per second. It was insane. <laughs> that got fixed, and I wasn't sure what the final outcome of that was. I didn't hear much of it afterwards. I couldn't find anything on the wiki page about it. So I did some testing myself, and it seems it still does combine them together, but it's about a time and a half the speed. So that means you can get going about 75 blocks per second if you combine them together. So we can make our tunnel even faster if we run a strip of that down here as well. Which, uh, we might do it. It seems like the server can handle loading the chunks quick enough, which is what I was mainly worried about. But yeah, this is where the Dolphin's Grace is actually coming from. This was the other thing I, I needed to figure out. <laughs> so, originally, like, whenever I tried to do something with Dolphins, I'd have a water block and an air block, because they need air to breathe. Um, but I kept finding they would always die. They would suffocate. They, would, they wouldn't come up for air when they needed it. So the trick is you put soul sand and then have a bubble column and that way the bubble column always gives them air and they're always in water so you get the dolphin's grace speed effect because they need to be in water for you to receive that and then when we start swimming nearby here it just gives it to us or as we pass by and uh, i did actually ask azuma if i should go around his base or not and he said i can go through as long as i don't hit any of his stuff so i left them some instructions at his base here in case he wants to connect up to it and get his own secret tunnel. So over at the shopping district, things are getting a little crazy over here. I did not pay for my road passes, so of course I got the barricade in front of my shops. And now... <laughs> Oh my goodness, I guess this is the follow-up to that. If you don't pay, you get the roses or something. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's something we're going to have to deal with because that's a bit of a big problem now. <laughs> Barricades, you know, that's easy to ignore, but roses, it's a little tougher. Uh, I got a great suggestion from Mayor Scar, actually, to connect a bridge from the main island here to Shady Ease, and he suggested I use the Frostwalker boots to do that. Now, I tried, like, pushing armor stands with slime block launchers. They only go about nine blocks, so even if you have one on that island and one over here, you're still not making it all the way. So I came up with something pretty cool here, I think. This is something I'm probably going to use more in the future as well. It's it's a, it's a good idea, I think, in general. So you hit the button and the armor stands come up with the Frostwalker boots on, and then you can hop across here. It creates these little islands, 
uh, that you can just temporarily hop across and then they melt and the armor stands return down to where they came <laughs> uh, they go down this hole here the water pushes them a little bit and then we got a piston here whenever we send redstone to that that's when it goes up this and in order to create the ice it has to slide along some blocks so it slides along the ice block here and creates the ice and then this aligns it so it goes straight down and it's barely noticeable from a distance like it's not like this big ugly redstone contraption it's pretty well hidden uh we just see four little dots on the water there then we can go back this way and of course during nighttime the ice doesn't melt so it's like a Oh, I messed up the jump. <laughs> That's like a permit thing. You gotta be quick though, because it like just gives you a little bit extra time to make it across. Oh no, I think I see roses. Do I see roses? There's roses! No! <laughs> Why? Oh man. So Scar kind of five-headed me a little bit on this, I think. Because he it was his idea for me to make a bridge. And I do it. Before we didn't have a road to get the shadies, now we do. So now, of course, I gotta pay for a, a pass. <laughs> oh, snappers. All right, let's go check out Sneaky Ease. Did anything happen with that? I don't see any barricade around here. So Sneaky Ease might have avoided it, actually. Do we have any sales? Oh, snappers. Oh, yeah, we sold some stuff. Oh, really? See, I thought these were, like, two of the most... Two of the most best things. <laughs> I thought for sure people would take the the nether bricks. The red ones there. Those are a pain to make. Uh, oh, and we sold quite a few beacons. Pig step sold. Um, what else did we sell here? I think we had a banner. The snout banner that's gone. Oh, there's also the stat poker. I forgot about that. Did Tango pay for it? Tango. Tango's a good guy. He would have paid for it. He didn't pay for it. <laughs> no. I'm not on it. I'm not on it, Scar. I won't go. I'm, I'm a good boy. He's watching me. I, it's a little creepy. Uh, but let's get this over with, guys. So we got to pay over here for our shops for the road access. It's one diamond block each shop. So we got the ice shop up there. ICEs definitely want to open that up. That's one of our big ticket uh, stores where we make the most money. Poker game, not so much, but we may as well just get uh, get it paid for. And I look through the boards here. I can't actually find one for the Sneaky Ease, so Scar never found it. And I also noticed he never uh, he never paid for his own shop, the, the Chess Monster. Still doesn't have the road pass for it. So I'm thinking, I don't know what's going to happen with this, but I'm going to pay for it. I'll just add it to the throne. And uh, I own his road pass now. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. We'll, we'll see what happens with it. Paid for by Etho, I own road rights. <laughs> you should have bought them sooner. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say only certain people can buy them, right? GTWS, I don't even know what that is. Contact Etho for your road pass. Five diamond blocks or favor. So there's actually one more funny thing about this. Just the way it all worked out. I had a security system here for Mayor Scar. He will not enter Shady Ease because I got the pandas out in the front. He's uh, he's afraid of pandas. So this, there's no way he would have placed the roses in there. Cub Fan's the one that's actually setting up the barricades and the roses and stuff. So that's how he got through the Shady Ease security. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have been fine, I think. I got a few building projects in mind over at our base. But before we head back, I did want to pay a visit to Grian's Bargain Shop. Best prices in town. Except for uh, Sneaky Ease, of course. <laughs> I can't get in here at all. It's like totally blocked off. <laughs> Ender pearls, yes. Um, this, where is it? It's up over here. Yeah, he's got these special boxes he's selling. Pay 42 diamonds and take a box. So he had four boxes here with good loot inside. And it's like random stuff. It's a, it's a kinder surprise what we're going to get basically. So I, I guess it's 42. We pay here. <laughs> It is so hard to see anything with these roses. My goodness. Uh, so we could go for the parrot or the regular green. I think we'll go for the regular green. Something something scares me about that one. It's like uh, it's the special one, and the special one's the ripoff, you know? Okay, let's get out of the store. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. 
no takesy backsies. This is this is the one we're keeping. So let's see what we got here. Forty two diamonds and okay, we got a dragon head. We got some gold, some food rockets. Um, man, I was hoping for some netherite stuff, but nope. Looks like uh, we didn't get any of that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite what I was hoping for, but it's okay. There's there's quite a bit of stuff in there. Actually, oh, I thought that was iron. Nope. Oh, never mind. Okay, okay. All right, it's not too bad, guys. We're making good use of the box already. We took the cake from there, and we got a display for our food item. Didn't have to craft that myself, which uh, would have taken a lot of time. And we're going to be using the bricks from the box as well to do some more building. So I want to build a wall over here today if we can and get this all covered up. Um, and I think... I think what we're going to do is bring this forward. We're going to get rid of all these trap doors we had here. Oh, that stays, though. Yeah, get rid of the trap doors. We're going to get the strip dark oak in front. And then this is going to be, like, brick all the way up, basically. Yeah, so we're trying to make it look like the water is flowing out of these pipes under this bridge. And it's going this way through a grate, like, to catch any debris in the water, that sort of thing. Uh, but just looking at this, I can see already this can probably be a block taller and this wall is kind of flat. So we want to <laughs> just make some adjustments to it now. So I want to try and get the stairs going to bring this back a block. And then maybe we'll curve it back up this way. And then we're going to just add some block variation with the terracotta. All right, so check it out. Just by adding a little bit more depth to it, it gives it so much more character. I think that looks a lot better now. Um, I don't know what to do above here, but I'm thinking we'll just have like some kind of garden thing. So I'm going to put some dirt across that. We'll plant something on that. Trap doors just to hide the dirt going along here. And probably slabs or something below here. Or actually we could go for more trap doors even. Might be better. And uh, one thing I also thought about with this, like we're really trying to avoid the gray color. Uh, even though I think the iron bars makes the most logical sense for this, I'm going to switch them out with fences, birch fences, just so we have a bit more color in the base. Yeah, I don't know. Do you guys like watching the like more detailed building, or do you like the montage stuff? I've kind of been mixing it between episodes. I thought we'd do a little bit more explanation this episode, slow it down a bit. All right, let's get this built back up. Ooh, yeah, check that out. I like that a lot, actually. So that adds more variation with the color. And it looks like leaves are getting backed up on the grate, getting stuck. And uh, they kind of turn darker green as they get old and moldy, right? <laughs> and we got all these leaves in the area. It makes sense, I think. All right, everybody. It's time for color theory with Etho. So if you look at a color wheel, red and green are opposite of each other on the wheel, which means they are complementary colors. They kind of highlight each other by their contrast which is why we've been using a lot of brick and like plants in our base because they, they look good together basically so the red brick thing around here kind of helps to frame in the green in the middle and make this stand out more uh but i'm also thinking it will look better if we do a transition material in the back there instead so we're gonna go behind here replace all this brick with honey blocks so on the color wheel, it kind of goes from red to orange to yellow, then to green. Um, so if we kind of go orangish yellow behind here, like with honey blocks, it might look better. But that's just a theory. A color theory. Uh, I think it kind of takes the edge off of it a little bit, right? I think I like that more. It, it definitely makes it more interesting. Uh, I'm finding this is standing out too much, though. So maybe let's go to spruce. One one tone down a bit. Yeah, I think that's a good call. I put jungle wood underneath here as well. Probably better with trapdoors, though, to be honest. So let's uh, thin that out a bit more. Uh-oh. Uh, we're actually running a little low on time already this episode. I still got a few more things to show you. So let's get through those. Um, over at the nether base, we got a new farm. Uh, kind of half done at the moment. New zombie pigment farms. So we're going to be able to get gold now, which is awesome. And uh, it goes whoop, all the way up to the bedrock ceiling there. And because we built this below the bedrock ceiling, we actually get really good rates. Because we slapped our nether, and the lower you build it in the world, your farms, the better your rates are. So, yeah, this is pretty good. 
Uh-huh, so it's pretty much just the standard zombie pigment farm you've probably seen a million times at this point. You build it out of the magma blocks so that uh, only zombie pigment spawn on it, and magma cubes could spawn on this as well if they had enough headspace, but they don't. No, 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 we stop that from happening. It's built in the nether wastes as well, so we get more uh, zombie pigment that way. And uh, we do that trick with the turtle eggs. They want to stomp on top of those things, and as long as you have two air spaces above the eggs, they can. And you want to position these two blocks below the layers, and then skip a layer. So if you go down to this one, you can see there's no turtle egg at this one. But if you go down to the next one, then there is. Two blocks below where we're standing. Um, so they get attracted to that at all the layers. They fall down these four sides, and because uh, we're using the walls, they have... Just enough space for two guys to fit between here and they don't get stuck on each other. And I did something kind of special with my layer design here though. I did a weird thing where we got these four holes um, in the corners. Uh-huh, so at the very tippy top of our farm, just below the bedrock ceiling, you see it over here. We got some redstone wire running to four dispensers with lava buckets. And when we hit the switch... Oh, it triggers that apparently. <laughs> It should uh, should send lava down and stop mobs from spawning on here. So that if we want to... Oh, I'm inside. Uh, if we want to run our wither skeleton farm, we'll still have that option. Is the lava coming down on me? I don't even know, actually. I should probably get out of here. <laughs> I think I put... Uh... Yeah, there's glass below there, so it'll, it'll stop it. So as long as they have a light level of 12 or higher on the platforms, then the zombie pigment stop spawning. So it should have reached uh, all the way down by now. Yeah, now it's all the way down, and the spawning has completely stopped. Uh-huh, so the question is, where do we take the farm from here? Like, it's working, uh, they're falling down at a pretty good rate, but honestly, we're not getting that much gold just because we're not using the looting effect from our sword. So we would have to spend quite a bit of time here to get a decent amount of gold, which I don't really want to do. <laughs> So, how how do we take the farm from here? I think we gotta either set up some way of us killing them manually ourselves, so we get more gold that way, or we figure out some way of making them aggressive, and then we either kill them with iron golems or with wolves or something like that, so that we get the looting effects while not actually having to kill them ourselves. So if you guys got any ideas on what to do with this, please let me know in the comments. But uh, just thought I'd show you where it's at right now. This will be the tenth move. Tenth move. Nice. Wow. Okay. So you, okay. you got two. Oh, oh it's oh, lined up. Go, 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 quick, go, quick, no, quick, no, no. quick, quick, quick. Get it through. Hurry up. No. Seems ah! <laughs> <laughs> the worst. <laughs> I'm stuck in the cobweb. Come on. I can't. <laughs> Oh my no. god, that looks hilarious! I can't get out of here! Be <laughs> Hit me, please! Do something! <laughs> get me out of here! I am totally I trapped! I can't I am totally can't trapped! You. Oh, I knocked you into the cobweb. You Hold move on. even slower if you're on ice in a cobweb, if you didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh-huh, yeah, so the other day, Beef and I, we got together and we just kind of goofed around the gaming district here. Played mini games for about an hour. <laughs> It was a whole bunch of fun, uh, but honestly, it's going to be a pain to edit that down into an episode. So I would say watch it over at Beef's channel. He uploaded pretty much the whole thing if uh, you're interested in it. I'll link to that in the description. But before you take off, guys, wait a minute. Don't go just yet. We also got the standoff tournament to check out. Remember, I had to face Joe for the, the finale in that. And we're going to end the episode uh, checking that out now. So hope you enjoy it. All right. There, there was a tournament. There were hermits. They got knocked out. There's two left. It's the standoff final. We got Efo. Howdy, sir. Hello, hello. And we got Joe of the Hills. Woo, howdy. I yeah, you know, I heard that uh, Etho was going to be showing up in one of those Naruto skins, so I commissioned this Orochimaru. I don't really know much about Naruto, but apparently his like neck turns into like a snake or something. So I thought that might, you know, help Etho feel at home. Oh, that's right. It why, does. Why, why do you look like the hamburger, though? <laughs> uh, I didn't necessarily give clear instructions. Oh, okay. I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're making so many mistakes already, Joe. E-dubs, we need you. I'm on it. So loading up the one side. Interesting. Nice. 
Are you ready for this impulse? Look at this. He's not going to oh. pick that one. Oh! <laughs> one that's not quite the same as the others. Oh, not very threatening, Joe. I don't know. Mm -mm. You know, it's important not to look threatening. It's important to accomplish. Interesting. I'm going to use a switch spots on you. Oof, oh. busting out the power already. Oh. Wow. Didn't see it coming. No, that's an <laughs> early surprise. <laughs> this is tricky, man. Here he goes. All right, we switch the spots. I get to go again. And then I'm going to knock back to you and not miss. That's the that's the key, Joe. I, a, oh, I used the wrong sword. No. Was, yeah. oh. well, at least it, you didn't miss. You, I mean, you hit the armor stand. Oh, no. Okay. Ooh. So, of the two here. Oh, no. He's a sitting duck. Oh, oh that oh. was that was a backfire. All right. Well, Nailed it. Good. It's Nailed good. it. I'm playing. Boy, is he thinking about the long you shot? Go for it, he Joe. is. Oh. oh. You're gonna try and shoot through through it and hit your one. Well, I'm gonna hit mine, but yours might come with mine with the <laughs> splash. Oh, he's done it! Oh, no. what a shot. I'm not thrilled, but you know what? Let's see. Oh, oh did he do it? Oh. Did not do it. It was a good attempt. Oh though. my goodness! Precision he's going shot. For the power up. He's Precision going for the power shot. Up. Come back. <laughs> Oh, oh, perfect. Baby. Ouch. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> three to five. Suzuma, have you seen a comeback of a three I... to five yet? Oh, he gets it. I, I believe in one of my games with Corrales, I was behind at one point and then pulled back in front. It can be It done. has happened. Okay. I'm going to retreat somebody. This guy over here. Get him over here. Oh, and you still get to go after that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's going. Oh! He's playing. Okay. And then there were two. Oh, yep. Joe. Oh, Joe. Hmm. Brains over brawn. Joe is saving his power-ups for... Uh, yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> for something. <laughs> he he <laughs> beat me without using a single one, Etho. Oh, did he? So... <laughs> Maybe he's trying to keep that going, then. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to... So take their turn. I use one of Etho's, and then I move one of mine. Yeah, that great. is correct. I'm going to go ahead and slam this guy forward. <sighs> Interesting. Okay. And then... <gasps> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, 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 no! This is this is bad. Oh, this is good. This is good, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he's got a little oh, tap, oh, tap, 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 tap. Beat that oh, count. Yep. That's overlap. Yeah, you got me. I could try double move. Double move is it? That, yeah, that sounds good. That's the only shot I've got at this point. Um, kind of looking at both of these, not loving either. Ooh. Nice shot. There's one. A little tap. I think you got tap. that. Just, just that tap. Little tap. There you go. Oh, okay. Right on. Okay. Look how perfect that was. Back in the game. The hamburger burglar strikes I told again. You that guy looks strong. Knock back to super sprint. My favorite move. Oh boy. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, boom. Well, and try. that's G it. GG, Joe. Checkmate. GG, Etho. Good game. <laughs> Good wow. game, my friend. Congratulations. As your prize, Efo, you get to keep one of the armor stands. Oh, we're not yes. Included. Woo! What? <laughs> yes. What? I am so jealous. Had I known that was the prize, I would have tried Look way at this harder. Joe. It's, Joe. it's mine. It's mine. Oh. I think of all the clothes I could hang on this thing. <laughs> oh, it's perfect.